Hello everyone, I'm Mugicha and welcome back to today's video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this rotating split reveal transition. This transition is a Da Vinci version of Stark and Strange's rotating split reveal on After Effects. I'll link their video down below. Today's clips are bearing Zemo from the Falcon and Winter Soldier, so spoilers to, to that and let's get started. First thing you want to have is your clips to look something like this. Then you want to go bottom right of your preview screen and click the drop down arrow and click crop and crop your clips to look something like this now that you got this we're going to do a y slide to both of the clips now pg entertainment has a really good video on how to do basic smooth transitions so if you're interested in that links down below but to give a quick rundown on how to do smooth y transit y slide you make sure both of your clips aren't overlapping each other and you go to your fusion tab now that you're here you want to add a transform node and go to the beginning clip and keyframe the beginning. And you want to keyframe the beginning and the end. And you want to change the, go to the beginning of the clip and you want to change the center Y to either go up or down. So for this, I'm going to go down. And as you can see, when we do it, it goes up super slow. And along with that, we also have this gray area here. So we want to go to edges and click mirror. Now that it's mirrored, so now it's, you have a mirrored clip of it going up and now but it's it's super slow so we don't want that so we're gonna add we're gonna go to our spline and click on transform now here you'd see that we have a purple line going up and we want to do an ease in so we're gonna ease in the curves a bit so now that when we play it it goes up but it looks it looks okay but what you know what makes it even better motion blur so we're gonna add our mo we're gonna go to our settings and click on motion blur and add our settings in and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side so once you get that then your clip should look like something like this and after that we're gonna s and now once you finish with both sides you want to your clip should end up looking something like this now after that we're gonna add the white line between the both clips so how we're gonna do that is that we're gonna go back to the fusion tab and we're gonna add we're gonna add merge backgrounds and rectangle now you see it looks like a humongous mess normally you should just unhighlight everything and do it but i am a little bit of a how do you say it i'm a little bit extra you want to add the merge you want to add a merge to the main timeline you want to connect the background to the merge and you want to connect the rectangle to the background and as you see we have this black square now what you want to do you can change you want to change your your background to any color you want and you want to change the height and width to whatever you feel like once you get that you want to have you want to find you want it to be centered so you have to go back between the edit tab and the fusion tab to get it perfectly centered and you see that's a little too thick so i'm gonna adjust it as needed and now after we got the white line we want to make it to appear so what we're gonna do is you want to keyframe the start of the clip but don't keyframe the end you want to keyframe to wherever you want it to be so i like mine to appear quickly so i'm gonna make it appear around here and we're just gonna have the two notes and then we're gonna two keyframes and we're gonna go to the beginning and we're gonna put that to zero so now when we look at it it appears like that but it appears very slowly we don't want that we want it to be very smooth so what we're gonna do again we're gonna we're gonna go here we're gonna highlight the rectangle height and then we're gonna do an ease in curve and then when we head back to the edit tab it should look like this I say that looks pretty good let me unhighlight that it should look like this the kicker is when we move this this clip here it doesn't appear for this clip so what we're gonna do we're gonna do the same thing for this one but we're not gonna animate it this time because we won't we don't need it so when so after we do the same thing we did on here we're gonna put it back here and you're gonna see there's gonna be like absolutely zero change because this layer is on top of the other layer next we're gonna do the X position split so we're gonna go back into the fusion tab and we're gonna add a transform node after the merge so like this and what we're gonna do we're gonna keyframe the start but we're not gonna keyframe the end what you want to do is you want to keyframe halfway through the third clip now if you go now again you have to go back between the edit and fusion tabs to be to exactly be where you want it to be 
and once you got it you want to make you want to move your x to the side but not too much just enough for it to be somewhat still on the screen but it, you see there's a problem still you still see there's this little um part of the clip past the white line and we don't want that so what we want to do is that we're gonna we're gonna go back to our fusion tab we're gonna highlight medium input one and we're gonna add a rectangle to it now as you see it made the, the whole clip into a rectangle and we're gonna adjust the clip to fit just the white line and of course you can move the rectangle to fit your personal preference and as you see now it won't do that now you can see the other clip there and then once and once after you do that you want to you want to go to your spline and as you see we have our second transform but the thing is you don't want to do an ease in or ease out curve you want to go back and you want to find the middle of your clips and for for me that's pretty much the beginning it's not really the middle but honestly i just do it to the beginning of the clip it doesn't have to be exactly the middle but for the sake we're gonna do it in the middle so once so once you got your x position your x slide right you want to hit spline and you want to go to your transform and highlight the whole thing and you want to move your timeline indicator towards the middle of the the middle of the keyframes and make sure this and you want to make sure the steepest point is where the timeline line it indicator is at so for it to, it should look something like this and once you, once you did that you want to your thing should look something like this now you want to repeat that for the other clip so next we're going to do the rotation clip and i've already done the rotation already just to make sure it looked nice and i was able to explain it properly so i'm going to give you a quick i'm going to give you tell you how to do this what you want to do is when you want to go to the fusion tab and you want to add a transform node after your transform two you want to key from the beginning of the clip with angle and you want to go to ex to where your clip stops moving now where you you keyframe the end of your clip of your x your x transition but where the clip stops moving and keyframe that and what you want to do you want to angle that to however much angle do you want so for me i did a negative 33.8 and if you want to copy it go ahead um and after that you go to your spline and what I found out was that what you want to do, you want to make sure you have your, and I know this may be annoying, but you want to make sure you have your rectangle transform, your merge, and your other transform done before you do this. And when you add your rotation transform and angle it, you want to save it, close out of DaVinci, reopen it to get your spline to look something like this. And I know it looks super messy, but that's what it's supposed to look like. Just so when you do your graphs for your um, rotation, you get you you're able to actually graphic pro graph it properly. And what you want to do, you want to have some sort of version of an ease in curve. It doesn't have to be exactly an ease in curve, but it can be like a modified version of an ease in curve. So this is what it's supposed to look like a bit. And once you've done that, it should look something like this. I know it's laggy, but once it's finished pre-composed on here, it looks it looks pretty smooth. So yeah, and you do the same thing, but other rotation. And normally how I make sure the rotation looks almost the same, I just take the neg like the rotation I did, copy the rotation I did on that one clip, copy and paste it to the other um, clip, and if, it, if I did a negative, I would make it a positive. And if it was a positive, I'd make it a negative. So once you do all that, you should have something that looks like this. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to make the second split layer. So, we're, so it's going to look, we're making this part, the area over here. So what we're going to do, we're going to copy these two, these two clips. Make sure your timeline indicator is away from the clip and paste it because if you paste it right where your clips are it's gonna overrun it and that's not what we want and what we want to do is that we want to put these two clips underneath our main two so as you see nothing changed but it's gonna change soon 
and what I like to do, and what I did was that I know I just removed these two so I don't touch it and I don't like delete it by accident and what you want to do what I what you want to do you just want to go to your transform on your preview screen and you want to change the angle of it and get it to where how you want it to be and it's so much easier than repeating the whole steps just copy and paste it you know so what you want to do you just want to play around with it and make sure it looks pretty good and yeah you're I'm gonna you're probably gonna end up overlapping them because you know that's what I did with the previous one because then it that's how you can get the two lines to look to appear and look at least nice so you and all you want to do is just play around with it and if you want to double check see how it looks you just bring drag the two clips in here and see you know see the adjustments you need to make so of course i need to make this bigger and i think what you should do and what you should do after this you should cut the that part of it and only have it to where so it doesn't kill too much of your davinci or might possibly crash it because this is a very heavy project i'd say and if you don't have a very strong computer like mine it, you could your thing could crash and that suck after doing like three hours of editing and edit for three hours and suddenly it crashed because you're trying to fix it so now what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna add a halftone with this and i'm gonna use the sapphire plugin with this so so finally, we got to our reveal, reveal click. The first thing you want to make sure is to make sure the clip is long enough and it starts when the reveal happens. So right when the so right when the thing opens and you see that little black spot, that's where your clip should be. And you see my clip isn't that long. I'm just gonna extend it out a bit. So now it's shown. And for this, you can do whatever you want with it. You can do um, how I did it, a zoom, a zoom out with a bounce or like a glow blur or something like that. But I'm going to show you how to do the zoom and shake one like I did in, in the preview. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove all these clips off of the current clip we're going to edit. We're going to head to the fusion tab. And this is super simple. There's nothing really difficult about this. Like anyone can do this. You go to your medium, you click your transform node, keyframe to start, keep the frame to end because we want that smooth. And then I like to go to three all the time. Three is, three is always my favorite. Of course, add your motion blur and add your motion blur settings. Transform it and do an ease out curve. So you want to do an ease out curve. So it should look like that. It can be slow, fast, or however you want it to be. And uh, yeah, next I'm going to add the camera shake. I'm going to add this camera shake. Not that camera shake, this camera shake. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the X deviation at zero. I'm going to put the overall strength down to at least one and speed very, I'm going to make sure the speed slow. And then of course you adjust it to however you want it to be. And then of course, since there's like the little edges on the side, you are going to change it to mirror. So it looks nice. And now we're going to add everything back on top of here. And of course, we're going to let it pre-compose itself. And that's how you do the tutorial. You can add anything you want. You can touch up anything you want on this. You pretty much, it's pretty much you cho change it to your desire. Uh, for example, here are some examples I did. I have one where words going around this one uh, Bucky and all that. And um, yeah, it's really up to you how you want your edit this transition to look like. So that's how you do this transition. Again, this is a DaVinci version of Stark and Strange Rotating Split Review. If there's anything else you want to learn, I'll gladly try it and figure it out. I hope this tutorial helped you, and if you have any questions or problems, comment down below, and I'll help you out. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video.